Okay, so now that we've gone over what exactly defines high blood pressure, now I'm going to talk about how to accurately measure your own blood pressure. And there is more to this than just getting a cuff and pressing the button, okay? Uh, I see a lot of mistakes in this area, people uh, getting inaccurate values, and then it's really impossible to know uh, what to do with those numbers because we can't trust them, okay? So here's how to get your blood pressure reliably so that when you speak to your doctor, you have accurate numbers to go off of, okay? So step one is getting a good cuff. I hate to say it, but not all cuffs are created equally. And there are a lot of cheap, bad cuffs out there on the market. Uh, you don't want to get one of those because if you do, you're really wasting your money because they produce inaccurate values. You can't act on those values. It's pretty worthless. So make sure that you invest in a good blood pressure cuff. Uh, some general tips, uh, the blood pressure cuff should go between your shoulder and your elbow, okay? It should be on your upper arm. Uh, blood pressure cuffs that go down on your wrist or sort of all the way on your wrist like a wristwatch are not accurate uh, in general. So get an upper arm blood pressure cuff. And if you uh, want some guidance on the best brands, I recommend visiting a website like validatebp.org. Uh, this is a website that shows blood pressure cuffs that have been proven to be accurate. And there's several brands on there. In general, I feel Omron does a really good job and most of their cuffs are quite accurate. Uh, it's hard to go wrong with an Omron upper arm cuff. Uh, so, so look for things like that on validatebp.org and make sure that you get a good blood pressure cuff. In addition to the brand, uh, you also want to make sure that you get a cuff that is appropriately sized for you. Okay, So if you get a cuff uh, and the cuff is too small, it's going to produce artificially high blood pressure readings. And then you know those are not your real blood pressure. So if you have a large arm because you're a heavier person, uh, you can measure it and then using this graph, uh, I'm sorry, using this table, you can see what size blood pressure cuff you need. And make sure that you buy one that is the correct size. And you can ask the pharmacist for some help um, in this regard. So, okay, you've gotten your blood pressure cuff, you bring it home. Uh, we're gonna talk about the exact right circumstances and timing for checking your blood pressure, but let's just do a quick test first, okay? You're gonna take the blood pressure cuff out, you're going to open up the sleeve, or the cuff itself, you're gonna slide it up onto your arm, uh, sec you know, secure it tightly enough that it doesn't slide down, Press the button and it's going to start measuring your blood pressure. Okay, you're going to feel the blood pressure cuff inflate and then you're going to feel it deflate and then eventually after some clicking and some noises, a number is going to come up on the screen. That's basically how the blood pressure cuff works. Okay, so I want you to do that on your right arm first. Write the number down and then repeat the process on your left arm. Okay, so measure it in both arms. The blood pressure should be about the same in both arms. It really shouldn't differ by more than about five points or so. If you found that the left arm was significantly lower than the right arm, okay, write that number down and then move the cuff back over to your right arm and check it again, okay? And kind of keep going back and forth until the numbers settle down. Sometimes just, you know, over time after your, your first attempt at measuring blood pressure, you'll, you'll cool off a little bit, calm down, nerves will subside, and your blood pressure will go down. So, so go back and forth until the blood pressure stabilizes in both arms. And if it's about the same within five points, then that's great. You can check your blood pressure in either arm. Um, but if there's a difference of more than five to 10 points between the two arms, um, then you need to measure, uh, follow your blood pressure in the arm that is higher, okay? The higher blood pressure is the true blood pressure, and that's the one you need to follow. In addition, you should tell your doctor about the difference in blood pressure between your two arms, uh, because that in could indicate a narrowing of the artery uh, going into one arm or, or other problems, and your doctor uh, can help you investigate that. But the arm with the higher blood pressure is the one that you should monitor from here on. Okay, so you've gotten a good cuff that is the right size, and you have figured out which arm you're gonna measure your blood pressure in. So now the question is, uh, when exactly and how do you measure your blood pressure to get the most accurate values? So I typically recommend measuring your blood pressure once or twice a day, um, probably twice a day at first, and if the numbers are really the same day and night, then you can just reduce to once a day. Um, and good times are in the morning after you wake up and after you've emptied your bladder, and then again in the evening uh, before you've had dinner. Whenever you do end up checking your blood pressure, you want to make sure that it's not within 30 minutes of exercise or smoking, God forbid, uh, drinking alcohol or drinking caffeine. Because exercise, tobacco, caffeine, and alcohol will all raise your blood pressure. And uh, you want to make sure that you haven't consumed any of those recently. Okay? So when you're not within 30 minutes of any of those things, uh, sit down in a chair comfortably. It should be a chair that supports your back. Uh, sit with your legs uncrossed and your feet flat on the floor. 
put the blood pressure cuff up on your upper arm and then rest your arm about level uh, with your chest on a armrest or on a table next to the chair. And then press the button, inflate the blood pressure cuff, let it do its thing, see the number, write it down, wait two or three minutes, and then repeat the process. Your blood pressure is the average of those two numbers. Uh, if there is a significant drop in the blood pressure between the first and second numbers, maybe then just try it again, and if it kind of settles out a little bit more, take the average of those two numbers. Sometimes people do find that after they've rested for a few minutes, their blood pressure will come down quite a bit, so you know, wait, and then you know, if it is coming down, then take the lower blood pressures that you get. But what I don't want you to do is always take the lowest blood pressure wherever it occurs in that sequence. So if sometimes you know, the first one's better than the second one and sometimes the third one's better than the second one, you can't just take the lowest of the three, okay? If there's no consistent pattern where the blood pressure is falling, you've gotta just take the average of the three because otherwise you're sort of cherry picking blood pressures uh, and you're going to uh, sort of uh, falsely uh, give the impression that your blood pressure is lower than it really is, okay? But again, if you find that your second and third blood pressures are always lower than your first blood pressure because you've just rested for a few more minutes, it's okay to take the average of those two instead. So just to summarize uh, this whole video, make sure you get a good cuff, make sure it's a good brand. Uh, you can check websites like validatebp.org to check. Make sure it's the right size for your arm. Make sure that the blood pressure is equal in your two arms. And if it's not, take your blood pressure in the higher arm. And then uh, make sure you're checking your blood pressure under optimal conditions. Uh, sitting in a chair, legs uncrossed, feet on the floor, uh, bladder empty, no recent exercise, alcohol, caffeine, or tobacco, arm supported at chest level, and take multiple readings and record the average of those. If you do that, you will get very, very accurate data. Um, now, the question becomes, how often do you actually need to do that? Uh, and is this going to be every day for the rest of your life? The answer is no. What I recommend to patients is that you check your blood pressure for about two weeks after any change in medication so that we can see what the effect of that medication is. And then again for about a week or two before any doctor's appointments so that going into that appointment you have recent data so they know where you stand. Okay, so now you're an expert in checking your blood pressure, so go do it and then come back for the next video.